Hello, darlings. I am Cassandra. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for coming. For those of you who are new to my channel, child, let me introduce you to the Jungle Beauty Goddesses, the life-size fabric sculpture dolls you see sitting behind me. I created these dolls myself, and as I was making them, they would not stop talking to me. And this led to my Jungle Beauty Goddess book series, and so far I have book one, two, and three. The Jungle Beauty Goddess book series is a juicy, sensuous, provocative love story about human evolution. If you are interested in purchasing the book, in the description box, a link is available to you. But y'all, I am here to talk to you. I'm sorry, I am so sleepy. On about the horns, about how to make horns. I have some juicy information about the metaphysical uses of horns, the meaning of horns. Um, horns are mentioned in the Bible and other spiritual texts. So it is so much information I'm going to cover as I show you how to make these beautiful horns. Now, um, yeah, let me show you. I made it into a headband just in case I decided to take it out of her hair. I was gonna glue it in, but I said, eh, I don't know. So anyway, these are the horns I'm going to show you how to make. And we're also going to make horns when we make the... I'm just going to get it in focus here. Oh, yes. Look. Is that gorgeous? Oh, my God. Look at there. Oh, my God, girl. Look at these horns, though. Look at the, this Capricorn doll. She is so amazing. Um. Anyway, we're going to... In this tutorial, guys, well, let me get her back in focus. So I want her to focus. I cannot wait to share with you this little this process. I will tell you this. Oh, let me get her in focus. I like her in focus. It's not just about me. It's about us, darling. So there we go. Was oh, that okay? Ah, uh, there we go. Um, this process is is very inexpensive, but it's so time consuming. It takes at least two days before they actually dry. And if you're impatient, this may not be the best method for you, but it's solid, it's hard, it's, it's malleable, it's, uh, I think these last long, you know, they'll be here. And they're really, they're just really good. But like I said, if you're impatient and you need something quickly, um, it may not be the best idea, but I hope you enjoy this tutorial and I hope you enjoy the information that I'm sharing with you about horns for and horns in general, but um, yeah, for this Capricorn doll. Thank you so much for watching. Hello, darlings. Meet Caprice, my Capricorn spiritual doll. I don't really like her name, but uh, she's pretty insistent. I hope you enjoy this DIY. Hello darlings, we're going to go over the items you would need to make these beautiful horns. You're going to need some Mod Podge, glue, um, you can do either or, cornstarch, um, all of these items are extremely inexpensive and easy to find and this aluminum foil that I am using, I bought it from the dollar store, okay, and it works extremely well. I wouldn't. I wouldn't spend a lot of money on the foil and then I'm using a bowl and um, you're gonna pour a little water in the bowl oh we cannot forget the paper towel mm -mm. and this is pretty much it and you're gonna pour the water I don't measure things and it's just not my personality so just pour a little water you don't need a lot because the glue is pretty you know um, wet <laughs> and you're gonna pour the, like I said you can do either or I like to use both. I don't know why. <laughs> so I'm using the Elmer's glue. I'm going to pour in some Mod Podge and then I'm going to mix it with the cornstarch and I'm going to get a nice smooth consistency. And once you have the consistency that you want, you want to set it aside and let it, let it give it a moment to sit so that it can become nice and firm. Like not too long because it'll start to settle to the bottom. But I like to make my mix first. And as my mix, you know, or the items, the ingredients are becoming best friends, 
I like to go ahead then and start making my horns using my aluminum foil. But let me tell you a couple cool things about horns. Oh my God. So I know most of you probably know that horns are used um, for protection and they're also used as a symbol of virility and um, um, being pro procreative and power in the animal kingdom. Like people, you know, if you see people, look, look if you see an animal with um, big horns, it, you know, it shows something about its... Um, lifespan its power that type of thing so even in the animal kingdom you know horns are a big deal so in the video here you see i i took the foil oh my god i love aluminum foil i think you know i just want to take aluminum foil and just make something amazing i love the way it obeys you so when you are bending your aluminum foil I want you to uh, visualize your your horns and your head and let that vision just let it download to your hands child don't even overthink it I promise you and just just do it like don't if there isn't every time I t take the aluminum foil I don't have a method I don't say okay take it fold it to the left then to the right then do it no uh -uh. every time I do it differently I just allow my hands to become friends with the aluminum foil and I just let it happen and I, I'm just going to tell you it's inexpensive you have nothing to lose don't overthink it just let the, the aluminum foil is your friend it wants to, to be someone I don't know if you've ever seen this movie by um oh the, I think it's called The Proposal with um Woody Harrell and Demi Moore and um He's talking about a brick, even a brick wants to be somebody. Child, aluminum foil said no. I think they wrote the book. Aluminum foil wants to be somebody, okay? It's easy to manipulate. And so here, as you can see, I'm just willy-nilly bending it with my hand. Have an idea in your mind as to what size you want your horns before you start molding your foil. If you're going to use it for like a doll or for yourself, that's the only thing I would say. Do, do you want them to, do you want to, um, do you want to mold them into the shape of ram horns? How big do you want the bottom? But even if you make a mistake, it's so cheap, it's so inexpensive, and it's so easy. Child, just go ahead, do it, and just do it over. You know what I'm saying? So I wouldn't worry about that. It wants to, it wants to receive your energy and, um, become and, and manifest your imagination that's what I love about aluminum foil so um, so again I'm, I am now folding so you see how I'm, with this one there is no method I'm just like oh, I'll just fold it this way now I will say this once you have the size you want the first one is the easiest because it's setting the standard for the next one you know what I'm saying so once you have the first one and you're happy with it you're going to use that as a model for the second one so horns um, symbolize procreative vigor and like I said before, animals use them to fight and they use them to protect. Oh my God, did you know that ancient gods and super beings also had horns like Osiris, Re, um, I can't, it's so many, I can't honestly, I mean, if you look at ancient gods and super beings throughout history, you'll see that they had horns. Uh, kings wore horns as a symbol of supremacy, of dignity, um, majesty, sovereignty, um, and horns oh my god did you know that in Asian markets uh, horns are viewed as having are, are viewed as super potent aphrodisiacs in the Asian markets and people think that when you take them it makes you very um, um, fertile and uh, powerful and just all that other good stuff also in uh, Michelangelo's depiction of Moses holding the Ten Commandments. Did you know that Moses had two horns on the top of his head? Like two? Yes, child. Mm -hmm. This is so interesting to me. So horns are really um, just magical, you know, not just for animals, but for humans as well. I heard that in some African cultures, that if a baby is crying, 
like if a baby won't stop crying you should take a goat's horn and put it under the baby's pillow and the baby will stop crying because horns are known to um, fight off evil spirits and also there's so I don't I can't remember which culture it is but there's a belief that um, well if a woman is pregnant uh, when a woman is pregnant you if and she's having difficulty delivering her baby like she's in a lot of pain have her hold on I think to the a right the right horn of a goat and this is supposed to help her you know have an easy uh, delivery so <laughs> this is interesting I mean and you thought I mean this is so cool I'm such a nerd guys whenever I'm doing anything it's like well let me see what the symbolism is let me see what it's about um, on the altar for sacrifice that Moses, that God instructed Moses to make in the Bible. Did you know there's a a, a horn on each corner of the sacrifice table of, on the sacrifice altar? Yes. And then um, horns are used. Did you know that ho that horns are also used as drinking vessels that are believed to bring good fortune? Yep. And there's a whole bunch of other information, but that is really all that I wanted to share I mean it was just pages of documents of different gods and goddesses throughout history and even like the whole thing about the cornucopia um, so now sorry let me pay attention to the video so now I am taking the paper towel and I'm tearing it so let me just tell you about like if you cut the paper towel or if you tear the paper towel it's going to give you a different look tearing the paper towel to me it gives it a smoother look because the edges are thin and it melts on top of each other does that make sense if you cut it it's going to look more layered because the edges you know they're they're not they're not thin I don't know if that makes sense but anyway I was tired of cutting it and it was just taking up a lot of I mean tearing ripping it with my hands so I decided to just go ahead and cut it just to save myself some time. So once you shred your, not shred, I'm sorry. Once you either tear your pieces of paper towel or if you decide to cut it, you're going to dip it into your cornstarch glue and water mixture. Yes. And I like to immerse it all the way in and then you're going to wrap it around the foil. It is, this is a beautiful beautiful technique darling I promise you and you can it's very um, malleable and it's very forgiving look, look at that look how beautiful it is oh my god you haven't seen anything it takes two days to dry completely and I'm telling you it is hard as a rock and it and what I love about it is that when you start to paint it oh paint loves it paint you know what I mean like when I use hot glue, hot glue does not love paint, at least acrylic paint. It's like, eh, it, you know, it kind of like beads up. It's just not a good relationship. But this um, technique with the paper towel and the glue, and when you are about to paint it and you put the paint on it and you see that the the paint melts into the paper towel, you're gonna, I'm telling you, you're gonna fall in love. You're gonna say, oh my God, where have I been and what else can I make so here I noticed I missed the spot and I just decided to go and put another piece around the horn now you can wrap your horn as many times as you would like darling it doesn't um, you know just as thick as you want it to be and again you do the first one with all your heart and you use it as a model for your second one the second one is always a little bit more difficult because like I said you're trying to copycat now here I am it's it's almost dry I was a little impatient I thought this video would never come out it's like semi it's, it's dry enough to work with um, and it may seem a little heavy I want to tell you this when you first put the towel with the glue in the cornstarch or when you wrap it around the foil it may feel a little heavy but child when it dries it's going to be light as a feather okay so don't think like oh my god it's gonna what, what is this no trust me it's going to dry and it's going to be so light so now I'm using some just some regular string I think this is the type of string that no this is I forgot where I bought this string from but I, this little spool you can even use the string that 
they use to tie the legs of like chicken and turkey. It doesn't matter. Or you don't have to do the, the strings at all. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted a little bit more texture. You could also use your hot glue and create ridges. Like just take it and go around and make a beautiful design. I started to do that, but um, there is something about like everything gives you a different look. You know what I mean? I may do the other one when I do the the horns for the ram for the um, Aries. But for this tech, I like I like the um, the rope. It gives it a I don't know. It's, I love it. So I am what I did was what I'm doing. I took the hot glue, just a dab of dab. And I stuck the little rope into it, or the little the string, or, and I am carefully wrapping it around. Now, I think with this one, the biggest mistake I made was I should have used a dab a dab of glue every few times I circled the horn, but I didn't do it you all know, so it would stay in place. But you know, you live, you learn. So when you do it, um. Make sure you do a little dab of glue. It will help the string stay in place. But also, don't just do it willy-nilly because you don't want it to look weird. Because the glue may show, but you want it to have like a really nice design. You can get so creative with this technique. So I'm just simply wrapping the string around the horn to give it texture. And I really, really, oh, I love this. I, I love this whole technique. So what I'm doing is adjusting the string on the horn and dabbing just a little bit of hot glue to make sure everything is in place. But I promise you, I learned my lesson. <laughs> and the next, um, while creating the second horn, I am circling the string around the horn, dabbing a little hot glue as I go. Okay, I learned that lesson and I made sure that I put it I think like in one line or similar in, you know, like I think, I don't know if I did it in the front or in the middle, but try to make sure you put the glue in the same spot so that, it, you know, on each level so that it looks decent. You see, see what I'm saying right here? This is, it really is beautiful. As you can see in the background, I don't know if you can tell, but y'all have on my PJs. Yes, I do. That's the thing about crafting. <laughs> you know, you're making these videos and um, the best time to do it is when the house is quiet and nobody else wants to smell the hot glue and the, you know, you have the hot glue and then you have the cornstarch and you have the other glue. So it has um, the Mod Podge and the um, Elmish glue. It has a strong scent which drives everybody else crazy. So usually, uh, this is like we, in the wee hours. We're talking like 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. Um, so you see here, I am carefully, you know, twisting a little bit of string around. Dab a dab dab with a hot glue gun. Just to make sure everything is in place. And this time, <laughs> see how beautiful that is and how smooth it looks. Oh, I love it so much. Once the paper towel starts to dry, the horn's history is unalterable at this point. I mean, you'll have to start over if you've made some mistakes. But as long as the paper towel is still wet, you still have an opportunity to reshape the foil, like, you know, bend it a different way. And you can also add layers, of additional layers of paper towel and glue to give it a different shape. But once it starts to dry and it's a little hard, you know, just deal with it, you know. But it's okay. But just letting you know that it's, that's another thing I love about the fact that it takes two days to dry. But in those two days, I mean, at least that first day, you have a chance to correct some of your mistakes. Isn't that a beautiful horn? Oh my God, I love this so much. I am using a rose gold matte acrylic paint that I bought from Walmart. It was about $2.79 or 50 cents, somewhere along those lines. Very inexpensive, but I, this is actually one of my favorite um, acrylic paints 
because it it it, it to me it has personality. It's it's not apologizing for being who we who, who it is. It's like no, this is the color that I am, and if you don't like me then don't use me darling but I am not going to water down my personality I'm not going to you know um, I'm not going to uh, <laughs> you know have a softer color to make you happy I am coming on strong and this is who I am and I love I love it because it's bold and it's it's um, it really look at you do you see this color it's not apologizing for who it is it is, it, 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 you know, and we, oh, I'm sorry. When you are painting your horn, you want to saturate it with the brush and the paint because you want to make sure that you're able to paint underneath and around the string because you don't want to see any like white parts because it, it doesn't look, you know, as good. Um, this particular brand, they have like a bronze type matte color. It have, they had a gold, like just a regular gold as opposed to rose gold. And I think there was another like brushed metal, which is like pretty bomb. It's like a gray. I like it because it, um, it just, it, the color to me looks rich and it looks, I don't know if the word is majestic, but yeah, I like that word. You know what I'm saying? And when I when I'm painting the horn, the the um, the paint really drinks the, the wait the, the paper towel drinks it saturates the paint. They want to be together as well as the string. And I love working with elements that want to be together because you get this really smooth magnificent look you see how beautiful this oh my god I, man you know I find so many little projects that I come up with that I just want to do it over and over again because I enjoy it so much but um, yeah this is really cool it's like I said it's easy it's very inexpensive and very light you can glue your horns onto a headband like say for example for if you are into like the I don't know what people do like the Costco type things or for Halloween or maybe because you just want to be majestic darling um, but you could just make them for yourself and just put them on and hot glue them onto a headband and I promise you they will stay there they'll be very light and easy to wear isn't that cool look at that look at that you can I mean it's seriously that's the other thing I love about it is that it's light and you can hot glue it onto a headband now once it dries you want to if you're interested or if it's to your liking this is when you add the glitter um, this, I also bought the glitter paint from Walmart and it was probably about maybe another like two dollars or so now I have made the mistake of applying my glitter while the paint is still dry, I mean still wet. If you apply the paint, I'm sorry, if you apply the glitter, glitter while the paint is still wet, the paint will absorb the glitter and you, will be, you won't be able to see the glitter. You don't know how many times I have made that mistake. I mean, but it took a minute for me to even figure out what was happening. I remember thinking like, I thought this was supposed to be glitter. So you just want to make sure that you wait until it dries. I really hope you enjoyed this DIY tutorial on how to make goat horns. You can make ram horns, but we're making horns for the Capricorn. Um, I hope you enjoy the information that I'm sharing with you. I am so pumped and so excited. Thank you so much for watching.